Hi, everyone. My name is Deering Davis, and I am a ceramic artist and a licensed clinical social worker. I have been working with clay since high school and haven't put it down since. Um, really fascinated by the connection between people groups and culture and um, clay, and I'm excited to tell you why I think it's so extraordinary. I'm not sure what comes to mind when you see this image. When I look at this, I wonder what I could create out of this red clay. I wonder who has walked down this path and what materials I would need to add to it in order to make it usable. I know that's not the norm, but I also know that I'm not alone because there are potters here. <laughs> Living in Asheville, I would imagine the majority have at least one piece of handmade pottery. It contributes to the beauty of daily life when we drink tea out of a mug that someone made for us. Um, I'm wondering if you've ever thought about the connection to the greater world through that mug. Ceramic vessels have been a part of every culture, every country, every people group, and every language for thousands and thousands of years. The oldest um, shards of pottery are over 20,000 years old, and they were found in China. Um, and unlike dance and music that connects us culturally, this is something that was made out of a tangible material. It's literally something that we dig out of the earth. It's the same earth that we're all sitting and standing on right now, um, and the clay materials that the Western North Carolina potters use are the same, virtually the same, as that of the Israelis, the Rwandans, the Costa Ricas. We're all using the same materials. When I first began working with clay, I didn't quite see the power and the connectedness of, of that global connection. I just thought it would be really fantastic to continue to make beautiful work and sit at a potter's wheel. So it seemed really awesome. <laughs> It wasn't until I became a Peace Corps volunteer in Costa Rica that I began to recognize the power and the connectedness of clay. Um, this is my friend Junior. I um, used to hitchhike to Guaitil, which is a pottery town, and met Junior and Juan Felix, who became my instructors. And um, it was pretty challenging trying to learn pottery terms in a language that I was working to acquire, but I worked on it. Um, the clay and glaze materials are taken from the mountains. They excavate them from the mountains that are two to three miles away from their town. Th this is a wood kiln, and the, the work that's fired in there takes an entire crew of people and days of, of stoking the fire in order to get it up to temperature. They're incredibly inventive about their work in Guaitil. They have methods that have evolved, but they're still connected to the Churotega tradition. They use old bicycle gears as hand-turned pottery wheels. They also use old fan blades in order to shine their matte glazes. Um, it's incredibly inventive. Uh, my friend Juan Felix uh, married a Peace Corps volunteer, Amy, that I introduced him to. And she, moved, she was from DC. They moved back there together. One day, he was at the Smithsonian walking around looking at the work, and he stumbled upon his own piece. <laughs> he did not know that he was a museum-famous potter, and he was incredibly shocked. In 2014, I traveled to Rwanda, where I visited the Pottery de Gatagara. It was incredibly hard to find, not advertised, not touristy. And after a tour, I sat down with the master potter, who I was unable to communicate with um, verbally because of my limited Kenya Rwandan vocabulary. After my colleague explained in French that I was a potter, he allowed me to sit at his wheel after he demonstrated a piece, and I um, made the same piece. He really did a great job of masking his doubt and disbelief that I didn't know what I was doing before I sat down. <laughs> um, and despite um, the language differences, we were really able to connect on, about our love of the, the craft. Apprentices in many countries, including Rwanda, practiced for years and years and years under a master potter. They assist in making glazing and firing before they're able to work on their own. It's true dedication to the craft and the eventual design of each vessel. This is a piece I saw in another town in Rwanda. Each mark was considered and intentionally placed by a potter. The ironic thing about this piece is that I'm not certain what tool was used to make it, and yet it greatly influenced my, my own work. After coming back to the States, my work had considerably changed. The markings I'd seen in Rwanda seeped into my being and were coming out in the clay almost without my knowledge. This is a piece that I made after coming back.
from Rwanda. And you can see that it was greatly inspired by their, the work I saw there. Not only had my work changed, but the connections I was seeing between potters um, became illuminated. Th these were made by Rwandan, these mugs were made by Rwandan potters, and as I came back, I saw a fellow student who was making a design that was the exact same, which was a design I'd never seen before I'd went to Rwanda, and they hadn't done before, so it was really magical. Even in cultures like ours, where everything is manufactured, there's, we're still drawn to things that are made by hand. There's something in me that needs to create at the wheel. And I feel really free and open, and I'm able to be creative just for the pure sake of creativity. When I sit down to the clay, I'm reminded that it's okay to slow down, it's okay to ignore deadlines and pressures, and all I have to do is rest in the beauty of what I'm doing. Um, I'm forming each piece with time and intention and care, and it's incredibly um, significant for me. There are so many different techniques for making work out of clay. This is a, a gas kiln. Um, fire, the firings can be gas or wood or electric or raku, and that is only one decision in what we make in terms of getting a piece to its final, to its final position. Our pots will look different. They will be shiny and matte and smooth and textured. They may be designed to sit on a shelf or they may be designed to have the daily intake of caffeine or even to bring water back from a river to wash clothes. Um, they're all different, but they serve incredible purposes. The wheel that I use is different from the wheels my Costa Rican and my Rwandan counterparts use. The kilns are different, the techniques are different. Um, and yet we're, we're still linked despite language, geography, and many years. We're linked by a vision of a vessel that's functional and beautiful, and it's a container that holds something that others will use and appreciate. That's the thread of connection that matters. <laughs>